if some sort of lifestyle art theatre thing is evolving there. Mm. As long as it doesn't put up any fences anymore, it doesn't bear anybody out and it doesn't leave any mess. It's just people being in the woods. Mm. And where they sleep at night is up to them, but most of us quite happily go home. Loads of us live around here. But on nice nights we might sleep out, but there'd be no trace of that. So that's everything we might have wanted out of the treehouse gallery available to do as we speak. Mm. And so we started that last Thursday night. It occurred to me that what we've talked about a couple of months here, having the tea garden outside with these kind of vibes. What we talked about a couple of years ago probably hasn't happened too much, but like over this side now. So Tara's been out with Christina <coughs> yesterday to go and do something, but they couldn't really quite do something. But nonetheless, on the way walking out the back, what they chatted about is, hey, we could just plant loads of wild stuff mm -hmm. everywhere here. Mm -hmm. like we elephants. could create our own little I mean, wild patches. You know about this? Elephants. Yeah, you know the elephant trails? Yeah. Elephants uh, are gardeners, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. On the trails, they actually sow seeds so that the next year they'll know where food will oh, be yeah. so they can forage for it on the way back. When um, there's a whole uh, brouhaha about villages which would take over little bits of trails and they wondered why the elephants stampeded the villages. Well, the fact is that they planted themselves on their dream. <laughs> right on their route, on the elephant route, which these elephants have been using for years and years and years as their gardening route. Mm. So they'd always have food supplies. So he was just clearing the thing. So, um, yeah, so Christine and I yesterday we were thinking we'd actually gone to um, Spitalfields Market to um, forage for leftover food. And we got turned away quite abruptly. And then we were thinking, okay, something that you, you just can't argue the point. So, actually, here's, there's lots of space. And little little spaces where you could just plant a pumpkin here mm. and a tomato plant there and a broccoli, you know, a little fruit tree, something. Mm. And um, so, yeah, just like the elephants, just have little bits where you plant things and you know that they're going to be there and they're mm. going to propagate and then the next day. It's an incredible gift the future. Yeah. And then there's spaces all over the place, mm. you know, which you could do, which could, something like that can be done. Well, space expands as well. When you put something in a space, no. there's spaces between the space. Mm -hmm. So it kind of gets backed up in its depth. Yeah. And once you start and you... Then the next time you go for a walk and you see all these little ends up being like Ireland, up. man, and like one valley is just fucking immense. It's got to be yeah. like an Ireland man massive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, that's really worth doing. So um, yeah, so Chris, she's she's um, sprouting some. Well, she's sprouting some seeds, sprouting some pumpkin seeds. And some other stuff. She's got the garden which we were involved in in Deptford. They've got tons of all They've got seeds. tons of stuff. Yeah. So, um, Big it, bag becomes, it just becomes a massive like nursery <laughs> for keeping alive all kinds of today. Yeah. rare herbs. And that's and another that's thing is that here in Marshfield, in, in, in these Marshfield. marshes, there's <laughs> loads of comfrey. Mm. Comfrey is fantastic mm. for pulping and for feeding the plants and stuff. For so you've pretty beans. much got your <coughs> mm. your basics here plus water because you've got the river. Mm. I think what you were saying earlier about um, the sea and if you're going to, you know, attempt to experiment with being free and having a real life, you wouldn't do it in a city because there's all this nonsense that's pushing in the other direction. 
well I found and the reason that I've come here to do this process mm. is that when it is all pushing in the other direction you can see exactly what it is <coughs> like it's a thing and it's pushing and I can feel it pushing okay whereas if you kind of close yourself off from it and find a space where there's nothing pushing in any direction so that you can kind of with clarity push your own vision out the the output the work doesn't relate to the problem that you're running away from mm -hmm. it becomes kind of divorced from the solution the you know, it's, it's still valid but it's an, a, a, just a spur a, another spiritual spur. vanity in a way okay spiritual vanity it is then you know if you see something that's broken you put yourself near to it not in it but near to it so that you can fix it you don't get run over by the stampede in a uh, car you know but if it's down off to one side, you might be able to uh, see the patterns. See the patterns. And it's all here. Like, the whole world's resource, resources are being channeled through this few square miles on the little island. And all of those currents, all of those lines of force, and you know, some really faulty equations that just don't add up in 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 a finite wor world model. They just will not work beyond a certain point, and we're kind of reaching that point. Our generation is a turning point, whereby if any of that uh, faulty variable stuff makes it through into our the next generation, mm. the incumbent, they will not survive. Like it will. Mm. It's yeah. it's mutually assured destruction in the next generation, mm. whereas we we do have a ch chance to avert that, and they'll have a chance to avert it, and so will their children and their children's children. Like it's we're not going to fix it once and for all, but we we have to make a dis decisive move in our lifetimes. Mm. Mm. You know, otherwise we haven't done it, and you know, mm. what did you do during the war, Daddy? Kind of thing. I took it up the ass like everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not a happy conversation. <laughs> You'll have to lie. <laughs> Thus propagating the excuse matrix into the next generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's something really nice. When we did this little garden at St Pancras, all the plants that we did it with had been gathered from the garden centre. They had been thrown out, so they were a bit... No, some we bought as well. Yeah, but most of them but most, were... Most, but some most, we bought. Yeah, but most of them were thrown out. And so they needed a little bit of TLC and, and everything else. Out. Um, neither of us are expert gardeners, right? We just kind of like have a little bit of love for it. And, curiosity and what wanting to, to learn but never had yeah, and wanting to learn. a patch and we made two patches so on the roof people, people pass they see they see us tending this garden they see this garden kind of growing and flourishing and um one guy was like okay i've got uh he stops and he talks and he says i've got a couple of plants which uh, um seem to be dying i said look a lot of these plants here they they seem to be on the verge of death and it seems that all you need to do is just give them a little bit of love and a little bit of water and, and a bit of care, and you'll be surprised at what happens. And give them, uh, put your put your plants into somewhere where they've got enough light. Give them the water. Maybe give them a new pot. Sure enough, a month or so later, he's coming back and he's really happy because he's taken these plants and he's just seen them transform. From doing nothing more than just like thinking, oh yes, actually I can't. You know, it doesn't take uh, Alan Titchmarsh to to give a little bit of love and care to a plant. It Don't give up. <laughs> so it's really nice. It was just we 
really nice seeing these little subtle um, subtle changes in, what do you call them, changes in consciousness, changes in awareness, just from the joy of seeing a few plants and realising that actually it's not rocket science. Mm. Change in the atmosphere, it was a part of, yeah, it's also, it was a part of the canal that people were used to really rushing through because there had been attacks and stuff like that, but it hadn't been for a year or two maybe so heavily, more police around or whatever it might be, I don't know. Um, but after a few months of being there, that little stretch around our little boat, got seven or eight little boats around it, there never used to be any boats there, but there ended up being seven or eight boats in the end, all huddled around, <laughs> coming too much for us. <laughs> and constantly people stopping and having chats there, all the time, in a place where people used to rush through for fear. It was like a little stop off and take a breather. And it's about halfway between Camden and Kings Cross. So that was really cool. Mm. So it's not necessarily, what I'm saying is it's not necessarily true that you'll be able to bring that kind of countryside element to anywhere, but it is possible. And that because it's a city doesn't mean to say that we have to live as stereotypical city people. That's true. And that um, in and just bringing um, that countryside mentality and relationship with life itself, bringing it into a city environment actually can free that up for um, other people because people are starving for that. And people like Albert who just has never lost it. And people and just like, is yeah. a country boy that's it. born in the it's city, also, it's also lived all his life in the city. what exists there already, because there is, you know, city, London, London wasn't always a city, in the sense that it is now. It, was, it certainly wasn't always alienated. Camden was a suburb of London. Yeah, and everyone knew each other. And um, even in the 50s, he's absolutely right, there's Albert. Um, who who's a boy then and he's got got such a glint in his eye and a spring in his step and he's like 60, 70, whatever but totally chatty he's got tails I mean that was a time he's when just his, his horse the his father's horse used to walk from St Pancras to Caledonia Road <laughs> to the pub <laughs> on its own get oh. fed some ale by the landlord and go back to its stable that was only what uh, sixty years ago. So cool. <laughs> I'd love to be taken to it from the pub. Where <laughs> my horse. Take me home. <laughs> Had enough. <laughs> oh, take me home. We're known by all that passed me by. Mm -hmm. 